Voltes V, one of the most iconic anime to be ever aired in Filipino TV. It shaped many people's childhoods, as it aired in 1978 up to the early 2000s due to it having multiple reruns of episodes. Its full name is Super Electromagnetic Machine Voltes V, but is of course usually shortened to just Voltes V. It has been a cultural phenomenon in the Philippines for a while, which led to it having an official Toei licensed live action adaptation by GMA Network that is aired from Mondays to Fridays. Like any other anime live action adaptation, it got its fair share of criticisms, mainly about how they will do the CGI and VFX, because Voltus 5 heavily requires good VFX for it to be at least a watchable adaptation. However, GMA doesn't really have a good track record when it comes to CGI and VFX. I mean, just look at Victor Magtanggol for God's sake. But GMA did eventually make all the doubters shut up by releasing the first trailer, and to be honest, the trailer did look amazing the first time it dropped. It was a visual spectacle and far beyond any other VFX scene in Filipino TV, which caused a lot of hype in the community. The live-action adaptation is titled Voltus 5 Legacy. It premiered on May 8, 2023. It's been a little bit over two months since it first aired. So how is the live-action adaptation? Is it a good adaptation? Is it faithful to the source material? Are the CGI and VFX as good as the trailer? We'll answer all of that and many more questions throughout this video. But first, let's go through the plot of Voltes V and the characters. Since the characters in the adaptation use their Filipino dubbed names, Voltes V is about the war between the Earth Defense Force and the alien race that is the Boson Empire. The Boson Empire are a highly advanced race and was pretty much whooping humanity's ass. To counter the technologically advanced aliens, the Earth Defense Force used their secret weapon, a giant robot named Voltes V. The Boson Empire also has a giant robot thing of sorts, which are called the Beast Fighters. The original anime was usually a battle between Voltes V and a Beast Fighter, following the Monster of the Week format. Voltes V consists of five electromagnetic machines that all merge into one when they do a V formation. The pilots are Kenichi Go, dubbed as Steve Armstrong, color red and the leader of the group, Ipe Mine, dubbed as Mark Gordon, color blue, I burst out laughing hearing his Filipino dub name for the first time. Daijiro Go, dubbed as Big Bert Armstrong, colored dark green. Hiyoshi Go, dubbed as Little John Armstrong, colored light green and the youngest member of the group. And lastly, we have Megumi Oka, dubbed as Jamie Robinson, colored yellow, the female member of the group. They are assisted by Dr. Mitsuyo Go, dubbed as Mary Ann Collins Armstrong, the mother of the three Armstrong pilots. Dr. Hamaguchi, dubbed as Dr. Richard Hamaguchi Smith. General Oka, dubbed as Commander Oscar Robinson, the father of Jamie. And last, we have... Dr. Sakunji dubbed as Dr. Larry Hook. The Bozen Empire is led by Prince Heinal, dubbed as Prince Zardos. Catherine Rhee, dubbed as Zandra. Jungle Rui, dubbed as Draco. Zul is still Zul in the dub, just felt different. And we have General Bergandu, dubbed as General Osla. In this video, to avoid confusion, I will only be using their Filipino dub names, since it's what they also use in the show. That's why I introduced most of the main cast with both their Japanese and Filipino dub names and also for any foreign viewers out there. Now that you know the general plot and characters of Voltes V, let's get on to the actual adaptation. For this video, what I did was re-watch the original anime, since I barely remember it. The last time I watched it, I was like 5 years old. Then after re-watching a few episodes of the anime, I watched the, both the Japanese and Filipino dub by the way, I began to watch the adaptation. I watched the first few episodes, a random episode I chose with my eyes closed, while randomly scrolling with my mouse, and the most recent episode at this time, which was episode 50. The first episode of the show was almost exactly like the anime's first episode. It wasn't one for one, but it was close. I'm fine with an adaptation that isn't one for one to its source material. All that matters is that it follows the same story as the source. The show does exactly that, follow the same story. However, I feel that they follow the story too much. What do I mean by that? Well, the first episode of the anime was a bit too fast-paced. After introducing each pilot for like 5 seconds, they immediately gather at their base and throw them into the electromagnetic machines, only giving them a brief explanation. It also suffers from one of the most common anime tropes, with it having teenagers save the world. Realistically, no one in their right minds would have teenagers piloting an expensive and highly advanced weaponized robot. Also, Mark here is a rodeo champion, how the fuck does rodeo translate to piloting a giant robot? Those are some nitpicks and gripes I had with the anime's first episode. The show could've taken matters into their own hands and introduced the characters better 
and made it justifiable why these four teenagers and one kid should pilot a giant robot of mass destruction. Because it is a live action adaptation. That's what I meant by following the story too much. They had an opportunity to enhance the quality of the story but decided to remain true to the source even if the source had a few faults. Aside from that, the show's first episode is equally enjoyable as the animes. Unfortunately though, before we see Voltus 5 fight the beast fighter with a goofy ass named Dokugaga, it stops and cuts to a to-be-continued preview. It was annoying but GMA knew what they were doing. Of course, they want to end the first episode in a cliffhanger, to have the audience continue watching for tomorrow's episode. That set us up for episode 2. Episode 2 of the show and the anime are vastly different. In the anime, episode 2 was fucking wild. It literally had their mother, Dr. Mary Ann, Kamikaze herself into a beast fighter to help Voltus 5. When I first saw her get onto the plane, on the back of my mind was, <laughs> imagine if she kamikazes herself. To my surprise, because I didn't think the anime would actually do it, she kamikazes herself and we see her jet get all blown up. I was confused whether to be sad or to laugh, because that shit was just ridiculous. I ended up looking like a crazy person laughing weird. That's episode 2 of the anime, but how about the show? In the episode 2, we are taken back 20 years ago to the planet of the Bozen Empire. It shows the backstory of the soon-to-be Emperor Zambojil and his cousin Baron Hrothgar. It was nice immediately seeing the backstory of the story's antagonist because it gives us an explanation and justifies the events that happens in the story. In the Bozen Empire, the upper class, which are people with horns, are extremely racist to those that doesn't have horns. Those without horns are treated as a lesser species and are slaves. Then comes Baron Hrothgar, the minister of science and a member of royalty. Even with horns, he shows kindness and concern to those without, making him liked by the hornless Bozanians. The emperor decides that Hrothgar should be the next emperor. Zambujil, who is the emperor's son, is obviously mad and jealous of Hrothgar. He then finds out that Hrothgar is hornless and reveals it to the other upper-class Bozanians. Knowing Hrothgar is hornless, the upper-class deemed him a traitor and a liar thus making Zambujil the emperor. Now with this whole event here, I think there's a bit of a plot hole. Zambujil finds out that Hrothgar is hornless because of a letter from Hrothgar's doctor. What he does is interrogate the doctor and blackmailing him by having the doctor and his family arrested. Because of that, the doctor was forced to speak out. The major problem here was Hrothgar is literally the emperor. He was seconds away from being coronated until Zambujil came. He could have just made the doctor and his family, you know, not arrested. He could have had the power to free the doctor and arrest Zambujil. The doctor could have said to Zambujil, yeah bitch, arrest me. And when Hrothgar finds out he's missing, he has more than enough power to find out what really happened. That's a thing I noticed with this story. But if you can look over that, episode 2 is actually really good. It sells Zambujil as a villain really well, because he's portrayed as a super racist, world conquering, people enslaving type of guy. He's pretty much Space Hitler. After episode 2, the next couple of episodes are all about the events before episode 1 of the show. And I love that because in the anime, the first couple of episodes were just about Baltus 5 and the monster of the week, not really giving us an explanation of certain things. The show does a remarkable job of building the world and its characters during the first few episodes and doesn't immediately give us the kamikaze scene. That's a brief overview of the first two episodes of the show. Like I said before, the next couple of episodes are the events that happened before the first episode. I find the storytelling of the show to be much better than the anime. The anime was too fast-paced and had some very cartoonish aspects to it that would only exist in anime. Few examples are the colored suits, the main cast being teenagers, and the dialogue. The show does a good job of keeping things seem real, so to speak making the show feel realistic. As for the characters themselves, they are portrayed really well being accurate to the anime. Steve is still the most mature of the group and serves as their leader. Big Bird is still Big Bird just like in the anime. For little John, I thought I would find him annoying because in TV shows and especially anime, I find child characters very annoying. But in the show, he's really not that annoying. Aside from a few cringy lines here and there, he acts like how a normal child in real life would. So good on them. For Jamie, I really like her character more than in the anime. I feel like she gets more screen time in the show, and she's the calmest and most cool-headed member of the group. Dr. Mary Ann, I feel, is done better because she shows a lot of concern for her children, as a mother should. Unlike in the anime where she's like, Alright kids, get in the fucking robot! 
They also gave justice to her character by not immediately killing her off in the second episode. Dr. Smith is exactly like in the anime, serving as a mentor character to the pilots. Dr. Hook is of course as strict and hard-nosed as ever and was recently introduced in the most recent episode. And lastly, for the protagonists, there's Mark freaking Gordon and he has become my absolute favorite. Literally one of his first lines ever in the show is him bitching about how he doesn't have a mother, but the three Armstrong pilots have one. At least ako kasi, wala akong nanay na nag-work dito sa camp. Wala na kasi akong nanay. But them. Then, in the random episode that I watched, which was episode 26, he literally said that only weak people have relationships because this was when Big Bert was about to introduce his girlfriend to them. It caused an entire argument between Mark and Steve, which Jamie had to stop. I love that scene so much, it was so hilarious. Mga may hinang tao lang na yung ikipagrelasyon. Kaya lang sila pumapasok doon kasi nagaanap ng validation. Wow, Mark. Bakit ni Minsan nagka-girlfriend ka na ba? Hindi ko kailangan yan. At some point, mag-break din naman kayo eh. It's either ikaw ang mga iiwan o ikaw ang iiwanan. Sasaktan mo pa ba sarili mo? In the anime, I really didn't like Mark since he was way too edgy. But in the show, his edginess translated magnificently. Don't get me wrong, the lines are still edgy, but it's so funny that it makes you love the character. For the antagonists, they are done better than in the anime in my opinion. Mainly because the show emphasized both the sides and not just the side of the humans. Prince Zardos is a wondrous villain. At times, the show makes you want him to actually win and beat Voltus V because Zambujil treats him like absolute shit. Speaking of Zambujil, he's done well. I mean, like I said before, he's pretty much Space Hitler. What more could you want? Then we have Zandra, who's greatly portrayed. You can see in her subtle actions and in her dialogue that she loves the prince and wants nothing more than for him to succeed in conquering the earth. Prince Zardos and Zandra are sublime villains in the show. As we all know, it's very anime to shout out your moves and they did that for the show as well. The reasoning they did was that the electromagnetic machines were voice activated, which also explains why they were able to pilot them really easily. The moves were very cringe at first, but it's growing on me and I'm getting used to it. Speaking of moves, the moves of Voltus V in the anime were very cartoonish. I mean, its belt can turn into a whip and it had this weird top thing which I called the top of death. In the show, they managed to not make it look cartoonish. They made it with a sense of realism. While still being ridiculous, it was fun to watch. The action scenes were done nicely. I mean, they are a bit slow, but it is way better than a Power Rangers Megazord fight. Just don't expect John Wick's level of choreography and you'll enjoy the action scenes. Alright, now for everyone's main question. How about the CGI and VFX? It's definitely not Hollywood level type of CGI, but it is far beyond and way better than anything produced in Filipino TV, as it should, because this show costs billions of pesos. Voltus V looks incredible. It's what you would imagine a live action Voltus V would look like. The Beast Fighters look fantastic. They look real and definitely not something out of a cartoon. The costumes look good as well and does it make the actors look like cosplayers. The sets however could look better to be honest, but it's totally fine, they don't look horrible, it's just that you can tell their sets, and that some backgrounds are obviously CGI and that they used a green screen. But is this good VFX kept up up until the most recent episodes? Well yes, I expected the visuals to have a downgrade, but to my surprise it didn't. They maintained the same quality of visuals all throughout the show. Lastly, of course, the music. They still use the original song from the anime, and 45 years later, it still slaps. The opening goes hard, and the transformation sequence will never get old. Definitely one of the most iconic songs in anime. And that's all I've got to say with the live-action adaptation of Voltus V. Everything I've said is my true opinion, and I'm not speaking out of my ass due to nostalgia. I didn't even grow up with the anime. I would even consider that the live-action adaptation is better than the anime. Some things are the same as the anime, and some are even better than what it was in the anime. All of the episodes are streamed on YouTube, you can find the playlist when you search Voltus V Legacy. But I'll also leave it down in the description because I highly recommend you go watch it. I really hope that GMA releases English captions to the episodes on YouTube soon because this live-action adaptation deserves more attention. That's pretty much it, see ya!